Hello everyone. Hi. Hi Inda. Give me a second. So we're here with Inda. Let me lower the music for a little bit. So Hi everyone. Uh, this is Fluffo and we're in another live interview of Math Faces and today we have the privilege of having uh, Joel Indalesio in this interview and he's gonna talk us more about himself. Uh, for those people who are just joining in, this is an interview in which we we just see what people are doing besides math. You know, uh, they are involved in some in some type of math, uh, but they they want to share us what they what they do in their other in the other and the other times of their life, right? It's not that they're they're doing math every day. Um, you know, always give us like comment or share this transmission and that's how you can help us we're also available on twitch so if your friends do not have a facebook account uh they can also join us uh, on twitch and they can watch uh this interview hi inda how are you doing today lufo <laughs> i am so happy to finally meet you uh, i oh man i cannot be more enthusiastic about meeting you today here with your audience oh my god i can't take it oh Woo! Yes. Thank you, Ina. Wow, you're so energetic for a Friday. Are you ready for a start the weekend? Yeah, I am so ready for this. Big, so, fr big Friday, big weekend. Oh, we are going to have a lot of fun today with you and your audience. Nice. Thank you, Ina. So, wait, where are you uh, talking us from? I am talking you from Los Cabos, my hometown in Mexico. Oh, Viva Mexico. Uh, Viva Mexico! <laughs> how many people are here from... From Mexico, is there anybody here representing Mexico? Let's see how many some shout outs or for the people from Mexico. Or what part of Mexico are you from? In the I Lake am Street. from <laughs> me or the audience. <laughs> okay, ask you if in the Lake, you choose a soundtrack. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, Carlos oh. Adrian is here watching you as well as Vinny from Twitch. Thank you for for being here. Yeah. So wait. So, are you a currently a student here in the U.S. or yes. can you tell us more about your status of your uh, academic status? Yes, well, I, I am doing my Ph.D. in mathematics in Baylor University in Waco, Texas. I am going to begin my second year studying there. And, and yeah, I mean, I got a lot of fun my first year and I am ready for the next year because it's going to be so much fun. Nice. So, Yes, it's going to be fine. But how how is this uh, COVID nineteen going on at your school? Are you guys gonna be online classes in the middle, or how's that working? We are going to be uh, hybrid, so uh, part of the classes are going to be completely online. Some other classes are going to be uh, presential, and another kind of classes are going to be half and half, half, half presential, half online. And also, I do have to lecture. I understand that I will have to lecture on hybrid class so yeah i am ready for making a lot of fun with my future students nice thank you wow so it's gonna be hybrid so in how many classes are you gonna be teaching next semester I, I, only one i will only lecture one class i think it's going to be calculus or pre-calculus for business students so yeah we are going to make a lot of business with calculus nice Okay, so you're in your second year or are you going to start your third year? I want to start the second year. Okay, nice. You're taking one class. Okay, so, well, the big question here, because people, we interview people uh, who are often mathematicians, but what else? Who are you besides somebody that, that does math or is involved with math? Who are you? Well, I love hiking. I love going to the mountains and taking people to the mountains, like for having company there and just like singing, uh, sometimes running, playing soccer, playing frisbee, whatever we can do when we are in the middle of the nature. Oh, so you like nature a lot. Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, when I was on the road of school, I was uh, a guide of, uh, of a project that is called Senderismo en Cuevano, like this. You can actually find it like this in, in Facebook. So what we do is we go for we go for hikes in the mountains in Guanajuato that is a 
place that is uh, that is in the mountains and also surrounded by a lot of mountains. So you can go there and take a beautiful picture. You can and you and uh, yeah, you can find some uh, small animals uh, and yeah. So, uh, when, since when do you do you like this? Um... The, the nature, like when when was it that, that you discovered, oh, re I really enjoy being outside in the nature and doing this senderismo, I think that relates to hiking. Yeah. So it was since 2016. So, well, um, in that moment, I, I, did, I didn't know what else to do. I mean, I was like all the time in my house, just sometimes doing, doing math or watching soccer. But yeah, I went one time, I, I said, hey, this is really cool. So we began to do it more frequently. We had to go a little bit more formal. And only a student, it was very regular to have at least 30 people following us in a hike in any mountain of, of Guanajuato. Actually, I think there is one special day where we did 45 kilometers in only one day. That is pretty much like 28 miles. It took us like forever. It was like 10 hours of walking, but yeah, I really enjoyed that day. Okay, the next day was not that cool because everything was hurting, but yes, you have to suffer a little bit for the workout that you do. Wow, 40, 40 kilometers, wow, 28 miles, that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> what time do you guys leave? I think we began at 7 a.m. and we finished like 9, no, I think if we finished like uh, 7, 7 p.m. Right That's in it. the moment where the restaurant was closing so that we ca could actually have a little bit of meal before going home. Ah, that's, that's a long, long one. <laughs> what, what is one place that you like to keep going and going and hiking and exploring? In, either in Guanajuato or here in the U.S.? There is a place there is this mountains called Los Gigantes, the Giants. There are two, this, these are two mountains that are uh, 2,900 meters above the sea level. So they are, they are two mountains, they are like twin mountains. It's El Gigante y La Giganta. And it's, it, it's very special that place because actually they, there is a small town called El Terrero very close to those mountains. It's a very, very small town. There is like 100 people only, but they really like parties. Every 14th of September, they go up to those mountains with the band, with the music band, and they have a big party there. They actually invite people to go to that party. What is the celebration on the 14th of September? It's like, mm, I think they celebrate their virgin. So they have like their own virgin of the small town and that, and they go and celebrate that that day in a special commemoration of the virgin. I see, wow. So those, Los Gigantes, right? The, the Giants? Los Gigantes, yeah. And how about in the US? Have you, have you find a spot here that, that you like, that you prefer to like to explore? Well, in the uni in the U.S., I have gone hiking only in two places. One is in U in Utah, uh -huh. Park City. That is a beautiful place. That is also surrounded by a lot of mountains and uh, and and they have forests. It, it is very weird because actually Utah is very desertic, but there is an oasis around Park City, and you can find forest, beautiful pines, and yeah, I really enjoy going walking in those places. And the other place is Cameron Park in Waco, Texas, where Baylor University is. So what happens is that I have even gone there uh, like three, four times by by walking. And it's not really big, but the views are really cool in a very flat place. I mean, it's very flat in uh, Waco, Texas, but Cameron Park it's beautiful because it's next to the river. So you can have beautiful photos of the river in different places. 
So wait, what, what, what were you doing in, in Park City? Can you tell us more about what you were doing there? Yeah. How so did you go from Mexico, from Guanajuato to Park City? How did that happen? Well, they do this summer program for a lot of people. I remember there were like 1,000 people in that place. It was amazing. I got to meet a lot of people. So happens that every year they organize this a small school for different subjects. I mean, they change the subject every year. The year that I went, it was about harmonic analysis. So I applied and they accepted me. So I was like, oh my God, I will go to Park City, Utah. So it was a, it was a very cool moment to go there. And you can actually apply like every year and you can have the vacation of your life while you I spent three weeks learning more things about math. Wow! So anybody can apply. How how the the they can how can they they approach to these opportunities? Yeah, well, they they just have to go online and look for Park City Mathematics Institute, and and so they can like read what is the requirements. Usually, are not very bad the requirements. Actually, I met people that was in the first year of their uh, undergrad school that got accepted. So yeah, the the odds are maybe in your favor. Nice, thank you, thank you. So for those people who are interested in this program, it's a Park City. Uh, I think it's Park City Math Institute. So yeah. make sure you apply. Look it up online. You just Google and like that. Have you been to any other parts of of the U.S. due to these programs or? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Ha have you been into like into different programs in the uh, U.S.? Well, this is the only program that I made in the United States. I also went to other schools in Mexico. Uh, they were not that big, like the Park City Mathematics Institute. But also I really enjoy those because that's the way that I realized that mathematics could afford me to visit a lot of places. So far I have been in 16 different states of Mexico. That means, well, we have 32 states in Mexico. I have visited 16 and 14 of them have been because of mathematics. Wow, so if you want to travel, I think it, if fits perfectly with you because you like nature so every time that you go to a new conference you just go hiking yeah that's that pretty much uh, one of the things that i do when i visit a new place or visiting uh, the natural museums that are a lot of places have do you record some of your your hikings like or your pictures do you have an instagram page or so yeah well uh i upload a lot of a lot of uh pictures in my Instagram is in the Joel but also I am beginning to upload some videos in my YouTube channel I recently did my YouTube channel is in Aventuras you can find it like this just write it in YouTube and you will find it so what I did uh, so what I do is uh, I began to record a lot of videos um, I am trying to learn a lot, learn how to use the media, uh, like to share the people what are my hobbies, and also the divulgation of science. Always, I am always trying to attempt to learn more things and entertain the people that I is watching my channel, so that it's not boring. You know, my main, my main motivation for doing this channel is uh, that. Since I will lecture next semester, maybe part of that class will have to be online. So I want to improve my skills for my future students. That's amazing. Have you have you have any relation between nature and math? Can you tell us like maybe you're hiking and you find some mathematical concepts in your hiking or can you tell us some stories about that? Well, um all that I do in that sense is that every time that I that I go hiking I begin like to like to see the stats of my hiking like to see what is the difference in the the difference in the level of 
I mean, the difference of level of the walking, if you know, if you go up, you go down, how many kilometers and from that, well, I begin to tell people, okay, maybe this hiking is hard for you. Maybe this hiking is appropriate for you. And yeah, I guess the, this, those stats are very helpful to give orientation to the people that want to start in hiking. How about, I think there's a term called homo, homotopy path. I'm not that sure about whether you want to keep going steep so you want to zigzag your route. Have you tried yeah, that yeah. as well? Yeah, I remember, of course, when if you just go up, 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 it's going to be hard for you, like for your legs. I mean, your legs are going to say, no, please stop. They, so it's better like to do some zigzag in your walking, of course, but yeah. Sometimes I have done the vertical, almost vertical walking. For example, in those mountains that I tell you, the Gigantes, the first time that we that I went, oh, that was horrible because we chose a horrible route to go. So it was like 7%. Yeah. <laughs> the, the inclination was like seven, 70%. So it was very, very hard to walk. So we said, okay, this is very hard. Don't do this again. So we had to look for another route so to go to the top. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think that definitely uh, is useful in, in any aspect, even in hiking. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know where to take the, the steepest or not. So, Ina, what do you do in academia? This, you're telling us you're a uh, second year student at uh, Baylor University in Texas. But, you, but you're in Mexico. Or are you, what's your status? So, um, yeah, well, I, I will come back soon to the United States to begin the semester. Uh, so I am I am a, I am a non-immigrant student, but yeah, well, with with this visa that I have, I, I can enter the U.S. Uh, for the next five years so that I can finish my doctorate. I see. So, is your school going to support you with this new case of the international students, or how yeah. how is that going on for you? Are you well, since I only have one online course, I have no problems with that. But also, uh, Baylor University is working a lot, helping those students who are having problems because maybe those, their classes will be completely online. Some of, some of these international students. Uh, so, um, so, they are trying to find another university that can take these students or making another strategies to help the, to help them to remain in the United States. In my case, as I tell you, I don't have really much problem because I have only one class and I mean for Baylor, I think it's a half minute since I will have to leave soon. <laughs> and yeah. luckily, right now, the border between Mexico and United States is not really close. You can travel by plane with no inconvenience. And if you want to go by the border, I mean by the land border, the restriction is only to a essential travel. But going to your university is very essential according to the law. So I can even go by land. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that you're getting support from your school and, and your school is trying to find resources to help all all of those international students who may be uh, stuck or be facing difficult this time. I wanted to do a check-in to see how, how are you doing in these cases. Nice. So what do you do? Like, are you studying math, statistics? Are you studying hiking, nature? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I study, um, I study a doctorate in mathematics. But of course, that is like very big thing. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can study with these things, right? So recently I have felt a lot of attraction to biomathematics. I mean, how mathematics can help to solve biological problems. For instance, when I did my undergrad thesis, I did it over how mathematics can help to predict the outcome of a muscle lesion. And also, I, I am using those skills that I got in my undergrad thesis, like to study the outcome of pandemics, like, you know, in the uh, situation we are right now, I am trying to read a lot of papers about models and 
I am implementing them in my municipality, like to like to help to predict like the outcome of the pandemic here, or at least under, understand the trends of of the pandemic here. But yeah, that is more or less the the things that I am lacking right now. But I am also very into harmonic analysis, partial differential equations. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like like a uh, learning new things and understanding how can we use this mathematics to help uh, the humanity. Oh, nice. So you talk about biomathem, biomathematics and muscles. So is that, does it have to relate somewhere with your hiking? You know, when you're hiking and you're tired and maybe you get some, uh, you know, strain. <laughs> is is well, it linked well. somehow with your interest or how did it? Looks like, right? It looks pretty much like that. Though, well, really, no, wasn't like I choose a subject. Uh, the way that we created this thesis was from the interest, uh, the job interest of my advisor in that moment. So it happened a lot by coincidence, I guess, because it happens that my advisor is a specialist in biomathematics, Francisco Solis. He works in the Center of Mathematical Research in Guanajuato, Mexico. And it happens that he began a this project with between CIMAT in Mexico and the University of Texas in Austin. So it happened that they collaborated, collaborated in this project about muscles. And I went to talk to him and I said, hey, I want to do the thesis with you. And he said, oh, I have the perfect subject for you, boy. And, he, and so, that's the way it happened. Oh, nice. Well, well, then it's a coincidence and everything matches, everything connected. It. Yeah. And it seems it's like amazing. you're having fun. It seems like you're enjoying it. Um, well, what was one of your, you know, like, have you ever feel down? Because you look very energetic. Have you ever feel down maybe doing math or hiking? Well, I tell you, after 27 kilometers walking, it's unavoidable to feel down. <laughs> oh wow yeah okay. i have another actually i have another very crazy story my worst say hiking so Keep it one day i had to sleep in the mountains okay <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay you had to sleep in the mountains yeah i mean it was a big uh, accident well not physical accidents it was more like um well, let me let me explain you what happened that day. So we were trying to we were in Penjamo, Guanajuato, that is a city very close to Michoacán in Mexico. And happens that there is the Sierra de Penjamo. That is a lot of mountains also, a lot of mountains. So we we began in Penjamo and we wanted to go to a beautiful place that, that is called Hacienda Coralejo. Maybe you know that place, or you have heard a little bit of that, because there you can, there they make tequila, delicious tequila, <laughs> tequila Corralejo, yeah, that is. So we wanted to go to Hacienda Corralejo and maybe try some of their tequila. Unlucky, in one moment we saw Hacienda Corralejo like five kilometers from us, but we were 200 meters above Hacienda Corralejo. So I was like, wait, something is not working in here. So we were there uh, running out of water. I mean, when we saw the hacienda, we were very thirsty. So we have to consume more water. And eventually we ran completely out of water because we thought that we were close, but we weren't nothing but close. So soon the, the sun began to come down and we decided to stay that night sleeping in the mountains with no cobijas, I mean, no blankets and no, you know, we were not prepared precisely to be walking there, I mean, to stay the night there, not even a tent. So we had to provide uh, the little fire that was going to keep us alive and and yeah, we had no water, so we had to survive. But that day, 
I got a lot of of this spirit like of soup of the love of living you know this kind of experience is what made me realize like oh my god i really appreciate what i am living right now i am living extra time <laughs> wow that's just crazy but um jose was asking if you have ever been lost in the mountain well <laughs> yeah precisely that's the question <laughs> I just answered the question that was made, but hey, but you were that not was lost. the first time that we was really lost. Okay, but you were not lost because you you know where you were, like literally with no map. So maybe we can come back to that if you maybe have another anecdote when you were really lost and you didn't mm. know like what to do. But first, let me give you a two minutes uh, of just random questions and then the audience, you can answer all the questions that the audience have. Uh, is awesome. It, Yeah, Arturo is there as well, Jose, Carlos is there. So if you have any questions for Inda, just drop it in the question below and he will answer all your questions. It can be in Spanish or English, uh, he will answer any, any of your questions. Uh, okay, as long as they're PG-13. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so we have a, a two minutes round. I'm just gonna just try to answer as many questions as, as you can, okay? okay? Okay, so let me know when you're ready. Ready? Okay. I am so ready. Do you prefer texting or talking? Oh, I love talking. <laughs> Favorite day of the week? Mm, Sunday. Nickname your parents used to call you? Chucho. Last name you downloaded? Last name I what? No, no, so last song, last song. Last song. You listen to or downloaded? Uh, porque te hice mal, Los Temerarios. Favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? Mmm. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Oh my god. Mm, I will say Christmas. No. New Year's. New, New Year. A scale one to ten. How good of a driver are you? Oh. Six. Invisibility or super strength? Super strength. Is it wrong for a vegetarian to eat animal crackers? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Do you snore? No. First celebrity crush? First celebrity crush, Nine Conde. Place you most want to travel? Sorry? The place you most want to travel? Place I want to travel. Right now, I want to travel to Guanajuato. Favorite junk food? Favorite junk food? Mm. Mango con chile. Tamales o tacos? Tacos. Favorite season? Uh, summer. Salsa roja o salsa verde? Verde. Your favorite number? Uh, 17. Okay, great. Uh, would you want to live forever? No. <laughs> Okay, the time's up. Okay, nice. So, you prefer tacos instead of tamales? Yeah. Okay, All right, yeah, that was it. We have to answer as many, as many questions as we could. Now, let's answer it. It's time for the audience to, to ask some type of questions and, and we'll close it. Again, uh, this video will be later available on YouTube as well. So, as I will upload it to YouTube and our pages are there with the same handle, math faces, either We are on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and maybe soon Snapchat. And after this pandemic, I hope I can go and visit you guys at some math conference. So that's the goal. So, so let's see, Carlos. Uh, Carlos Adrián asks, oh, if you choose a soundtrack. <laughs> well, I think that's a question for me. <laughs> I just play some, <laughs> some questions that, yeah, I just put in the soundtrack uh, some Mexican songs. And... Do you yeah, like the song? Really What was your what's your favorite song like? Uh, what's your favorite type of music? My favorite type of music. I'm. I mean, I really change the music I listen very regularly. I, I mean, I have listened to reggaeton. I have listened to very old Mexican music. You know, also corridos. Also, I recently began to listen to a bit of Russian music and German music. So I want to. 
I want to do some mate corridos. We should make some. If people are interested in that, we should make some mate corridos. Maybe we should, <laughs> we can come out with something. Mate <laughs> very soon, very soon in my channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Phoebe, Phoebe say hello. Uh, then we have uh, Carlos and Viva, <laughs> Viva Mexico. And then we have Carlos Adrián ask, what do you think are the most remarkable differences between hiking in the USA or Mexico? Hmm. It's very, well, I guess there are very beautiful places to hike in both of those places. I think the main difference is the weather. I mean, in Mexico, we have a weather, a weather that is like very regular. I mean, most of the time there is the sun outside or there is clouds, but not very aggressive. So it's very tropical. When, but in the United States, the main place for go hiking is Colorado. I have never gone there, but I know that it's very, very, very cold. So yeah, I guess the weather is the main thing that you have to, to, to be aware of. So yeah, I mean, you have to be aware of that because you have to have the good tools for hiking in the place that you will go. So I guess it's easier in Mexico, I guess. Arturo Arellano, he said, te amo, Inda. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> eh, Jos Jose Marcos uh, Milan uh, says, have you ever been lost in the mountains? I, I think what he meant is like really lost, like like where you have where you have no sense where you were. Um, well, I have very often I have had like very small moments where I am like, oh, okay, this is not very regular. But yeah, it's mainly lapses of one, two hours. But yeah, uh, mainly when we got more crazy, you know, sometimes with the people, when you go with people, when you have a big crowd with you, you don't want to be lost, you know? So, yeah, I mean, with people, the most time I have been lost is half an hour, but I found myself pretty, pretty quick, but really, really lost, not that very often, because, yeah, I mean, I think the closest moment was in that uh, story that I told you, that, that I told you of Penjamo, because it also happened that in some moment we ran out of GPS. But in that moment we decided to come back by the same route that we began with. You know, you will remember where you was before. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't that big deal, but yeah, it's... it's it was an adventure. I will say kind of. <laughs> <laughs> But you do get lost for 30 minutes at least. Yeah, 30 <laughs> minutes, yeah, but hey, it's, it's not big deal if you, if the people, if the people doesn't realize that you got lost. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, well, Carlos says, uh, what position do you play in soccer? I am goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Now, yeah. Jose Marcos keeps asking, he says, he asks, uh, what is this? He wants to know what projects do you have? Oh, hold on, let me read this carefully. What projects do you have about popularization of mass? Well, uh, right now I have the my channel, as I told you, in uh -huh. Aventuras, the YouTube channel. Uh, I am thinking of uploading a little bit of divulgation of the science. Also, I have my Facebook page. I have my Facebook page is called Devotional Matrimonio. <laughs> Right now, all this content is in Spanish, but I am thinking of soon, I will begin with the translation uh, in the subtitles for those of you that don't know Spanish, so that you can get to know like a little bit more uh, of my hobbies and the divulgation of math that I like doing. Can you tell us what does, what is, can you show us the, the content in Mate Brutico? What does it say? Or what does it mean? Yeah, what does the devotional, devotional mate brutico mean? Like, can you no. translate it? it? Well, it's hard, you know, it's devotional. And this word is like mathematico, but there is this word brutico. It's like uh, referring 
to a very common say to say to a person that didn't do something very intelligent in the moment, you know? It's like okay. trying to, yeah, saying devotional mathematical was very, you know, like very, very, will be like, oh no, too much math will be kind of scary, but putting Rutico will be more like, Friendly. oh, it's not, it's more like a joke. I see. Yeah. That's a really good name. That's a really good name. How do you came with it? How do you came up with the name? Well, I was just, just chatting with a friend, uh, with a friend that, that we, I mean, we are getting ready for another project. So I was chatting with this friend and I told him, hey, what do you think of this name? And he said, hey, <laughs> looks amazing, bro, looks amazing. And then, yeah, it was all by a student. I, it was like when, by talking with another friend. So, Carlos says, well, another Carlos, Carlos Adrián, says, um, salsa de que pica o de la que no pica? De la que pica. <laughs> ¿Qué tan picante? De 1 al 10. Uh, sometimes 10, sometimes 8. So, it's all a, I mean, you have to follow what your body wants to eat, you know? When it's zero spice, it's like, oh my god, I cannot eat this. But when it's thin, sometimes it's, oh my god, I cannot eat this. <laughs> so, you have to control yourself sometimes. But yeah, I mean, in the United States, the main things that I like tasting is when I go to a restaurant and I order for the habanero hamburger or the habanero burrito or things like that. You know, you have to go crazy from time to time. Okay, so yeah, let's let's wrap it up. But last one, I, I Carlos O. Oh, tequila or mezcal? Mezcal. Yeah, I, I prefer mezcal. It, it, I mean, and there is a big reason why I prefer that. You know, the, the mezcal I feel is more pure. So, actually, if you drink, you over drink mezcal, you are. I mean, it's highly possible that you will not get hangover. You have to try it, eh? You have to try it. Try a lot of mezcal today, <laughs> and you will notice that you will not get hangover tomorrow. And if you get, it's because you combine it with another thing. Okay, but don't drink and drive, okay, guys? <laughs> no, never do that. Never do that. Awesome. All right, thank you, Inda. Last question to close this up, and thank you for the audience for being here. Wait, hold on. There's one more question from Dennis. When are you coming to Guanajuato? Oh. Oh guys, I really would love to go to Guanajuato soon. I mean, it, I miss so much going to Guanajuato. I mean, besides of the people that I met there, I really miss the mountains that they have. So I want to go there as soon as possible, as soon as we get back to more or less normal. I mean, as soon as uh, I can be able to hang out again with my friends in the mountains. They, so. Let's hope that it's soon. If, if it was about me, I will be there tomorrow. Oh, okay. Tomorrow he's going to go there. He's just going to walk there. <laughs> he's going to hike all the way to Guanajuato. Yeah, How far is it? Los Cabos to Guanajuato. Scene. There is a scene in the middle, so it's a little bit inconvenient. But yeah, why not? <laughs> you can swim it all over, you know? <laughs> awesome. Okay. So the question that we have, and I ask, is there anything that you would like to share or say to the general audience regarding the concept of math people? Well, uh, don't be scared of math. Don't be scared of mathematicians. We have hobbies as much as you have hobbies. And a lot of the times, well, we can even have something in common. I mean, and that thing, this in common is what makes a friendship possible, you know? And also, uh, if when we talk about the science, there are things that we can do together. I mean, why not we can combine psychology and mathematics? Why not? Why not we combine biology and math? Why not we combine geography and math? Let's combine everything, you know? Why, why the tacos are so delicious? Because you put a lot of things in there and the combination is cool. Let's look for cool combinations. Hi, right, so... Mathematics is like a taco. Well, yeah, <laughs> delicious. 
<laughs> uh, thank you. That was a really nice uh, analogy comparison, right? So you have to, yeah, you have to trade market these mathematics or tacos. <laughs> okay. Man, you awesome. nailed it. Awesome. <laughs> thank, thank you, Flufo, for having me. Thank you for inviting me. I am so happy to be here with your audience. So happy to be here in your interview. No, oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here, Ida. And I, w I would love to keep you here for maybe another hour because the rating keeps going up with you and with everybody else. You know, it's just that uh, I'm sure people have to do other things on Friday and there's uh, probably other conference going on live. Uh, also, do not forget because there is a, uh, for those who speak Spanish or want to try to Spanish, there is a, a Cibre Colloquio uh, Latino Americano that happens every Friday at 10. So that's what we're moving our our interviews are at noon pacific time so it can give us a chance to not overlap with this uh with these other events that are happening and uh, thank you in that next week we'll see you at, at noon with so, someone else and if you want to participate and also come interview just send us a message and if you would like to participate you know we're, we would love to have you here and prepare what you do and, and your experience and who are you besides your mathematics career thank you Inda, and thank you everybody and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.